Nice to see you. That was great playing, man. I I felt it was like the opening to that John uh, Long John Baldry, uh, Don't Play No Boogie Woogie on the oh, King yeah, of Rock and Roll. Same. Early 70s. Yeah, 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 early stuff. So how are you? I'm uh, I'm doing good. I found out a couple of things today that uh, most dentist offices are closed on Saturdays. I don't know if it's a religious thing or maybe that's just the, the rewards of uh, putting in all the time in dental school. But uh, Junior there chipped his tooth on the pool last night, so... We finally found an emergency place. Oh, yeah. So now he no longer has to have the nickname Chip. <laughs> Chip off the old block. Junior being his son that you can't yeah. see. He's uh, seated uh, behind. Uh, you know, we, we first met, I think, uh, on, on this radio station when I was doing a similar program. God, it must have been 20 years ago. Uh, Jim Carrey was still affordable back then. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yes. It was early 80s, like 81, 82, something like that. You had a, a, a great line, I recall. We, we took some calls, and there was an, an, elderly, an elderly gentleman who called in. And like many elderly people uh, of his time, his dialogue and his, um, his words, phraseology, is a lot different than, than ours today. And he spoke of you as being, I believe, a colored comedian, something like that. He, he, he sounded racist. I don't believe that he, but he meant to be. No, he I was just, just old, like an old guy. Yeah. And you had a great line you said, you know, Bob, or whatever his name was, you're never too old for a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that endeared me to him. Yeah, but that was very funny. He actually, I don't even think he was offended. I think he did uh, laugh. He probably on. didn't know what a drive-by was, yeah. which... How long did you do the the Bell Talking Beavers thing? Because, boy, that was a big I success. wish it was me. That's not me. It's not? Well, I know it, what I mean. It wasn't a, yeah, not That you. wasn't me. It's a, it's a guy from, a friend of Norm McDonald's from the States. Sounded just like me. And uh, even my sister-in-law thought it was me. My ex-wife, she got excited thinking that there was going to be an increase in child support. And it wasn't me. Where am I getting this from? Because uh, everybody, everybody oh, thought, thought it was me. You didn't know. Oh, yeah, I was walking around with my bank statement ta taped to my forehead so people would know it wasn't me. Okay. You know. And if Calling I say it was me. research department, see if there's somebody hanging around looking for a gig. And if to cover you, if I said, oh, that was great, then I'd have Revenue Canada saying that was undeclared income. So, you know, that, I wish it was me. That, uh, that would have bought a, a couple, of, uh, couple of beers and, uh, wow. and an old car here and there. You're uh, you're doing uh, this uh, the all black comedy show, but it, but it used to be it was called like the Nubian. Disciples. Well, we were called the Nubian Disciples of Prior, and then when I got it copyrighted or incorporated, I thought that maybe Prior's uh, family might have a problem with it, so we dropped the Prior part. Mm -hmm. So then became Nubian Disciples All Black Comedy Review, and we had uh, a Nathan McIntosh on last. Funny week. kid, great kid. One of only five white guys who headlined at the show. Uh, yeah, there was him, Jerry D. Um, you spoke to him on the phone. Jerry D? Yes. Okay, super. Jerry used to always come and tape, uh, tape spots of the Nubian show when he's trying to send the Leno people a tape because it's a hot, hot, hot crowd. So there's uh, Jason Rouse, um, uh, uh, Rob Clifford, and there may have been one other, but I'm trying to remember who it could have been. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we've, um, we, we, we've, uh, we've, we've put on comics of all stripes. Yeah. You know. That's cool. So are you, are you busy lately? Not busy, but um, I've got you know I've got great gigs coming up when they do come up. I was working cruise ships up until about uh, four or five months ago, and that was uh, that defied all logic. But um, do you have two acts for that? Somebody told me there's there's like a, the early show which has yeah. to be completely clean, yeah. and the later one. I had one and a half acts is what I had. Uh, <laughs> we had to do five shows a week. Two were PG, and three were the R shows. So my first week out. I got a complaint uh, sent to uh, the agency saying that my R-rated jokes were too R-rated for the R-rated show. So I said, in other words, 20-year-old Buffy, who's writing up this report, really meant to say it was X-rated. But um, the R-rated show, I was just starting to get the hang of it, and then uh, we had one of the big wigs from uh, the cruise line on on one show, and I guess I scored about a 4 out of 10, but that was enough to get me uh, the writing papers off there. But I was writing new stuff the whole time, you know, but... Cruise ships are kind of different, even when you're doing the R-rated show, because basically I felt like I had to write fart jokes for McCain voters. <laughs> you know that. You know, if I had more of that kind of stuff, that would have gone further, probably. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you follow American politics a lot? I follow American politics more than Canadian politics, much to uh, 
much to my great shame. But the, the American politics always has such great scandal. I mean, the Republicans used to always get in trouble for, for stealing and thieving and, and, and what have you. And lately, um, sexual uh, uh, scandals have kind of undone some of the top runners in the Republican Party. Yeah. And traditionally, Democrats are the ones always caught with their pants down. Yeah. So, And then uh, you have some Republicans that are anti-gay, and they're, uh, they're tapping on the floor in the bathrooms of airports. So, <laughs> you know, and, you, know you, you think to yourself... These guys, when they have such big aspirations, such big dreams, why, why would they risk it? They know that anything that even resembles that kind of an act, you're toast. You're gone. Hey, By but, the way, Blagojevich started his federal yeah, prison term yeah, yesterday. Yeah, Elvis has left the building. <laughs> but uh, I think he's, what, the, the third or fourth Illinois governor in the past 15 years to get a sentence. So it's good to see that Chicago politics is always the same. Yeah. I've been watching the Kennedy miniseries, how they uh, bought the ballot boxes on that one. So it's always been dirty there. I like that. that was, I thought that was well done. And a Canadian-made film, which was great. And Barry mm -hmm. Pepper's a Canadian. You know, but as I always said in Chicago, voter, voterly, vote often. <laughs> so, but I mean, this whole thing with Obama. I mean, I mean, I was I was thrilled for him, and uh, I used to live in Chicago, and he lived in the same neighborhood that uh, I grew up in. So I kind of felt that like he was really a hometown boy there. And um, you know, it seems like they don't want to give him credit for anything. Like when they when they killed Bin Laden, they said that Bin Laden's been dead for years. So my take was, well, then why didn't Bush take credit for it then? Yeah. And then they said Obama had nothing to do with the killing of Bin Laden. And that, that just shows you how racism is, 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 is alive in America. It's the first time in the history of that country they don't believe a black man was involved in a shooting. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I was actually surprised that that he did win, but I thought, well, this is kind of interesting for the you know for those who are, who are frozen in 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 the '60s. Somehow, you know, uh, you got a black guy running against a woman. They're thinking like, what what, what do I do? What do right. I do? Well, you know? well, at least he'll be at least he'll be evil, even templed four weeks out of four. Was probably the logic of the of the independent voters on that one. Probably. I remember Dick Gregory running for president, and uh, I don't he didn't have much of a chance, but. No. It was always good for the material back then. That's okay. Well, listen, if, if um, what's his name, uh, who's that moron who just, who's, is he still in running for the Republicans? Newt. What's his name? Newt? Newt. Newt. Yeah, Newt's Newt still alive. Newt's me. He yeah. won two southern states and got some phone numbers from uh, from some uh, chicks, so he's still in the race. <laughs> yeah, oh man, is that, he's That's telling, like the ultimate oh, I wish we had a Canadian politician like that. It's in a Quebec. If you want to be in Canada, you have to speak English. I mean, how do you go to Puerto Rico and tell people that, you know? <laughs> you want statehood, you have to speak English. Wow. You know? and, and then he started humming this uh, theme song from When You're a Jet, You're a Jet All the Way. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't want no sharks. West Side Story humor there. Kenny Robinson.